So landlords are doing urgent rent cuts in order to fill their vacant properties. And right now we are seeing um, between one and three months of free rent yep. trying to get people to move in. Yeah, this is a this is a sign, guys. We've been talking about this for a while. It's very exciting. First of all, if you're a if you're a renter, this is long overdue. So, you know, landlords have been lucky uh, and you know you everybody like talks about how landlords are greedy this listen this is a supply and demand issue so what we have here jerry you want to put that first chart up uh, if you would what we have here guys is is this tells the story i always say a, a picture is worth a thousand words here guys so let's just take a look at a couple things here the the black line is the supply expansion rate okay and as a percentage of the existing inventory and the, 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 the blue bar are sorry, the green bars are the units completed. And then the orange, of course, that is the the anticipated inventory that's going to be delivered. Now, why is all this important? And by the way, thanks to RealPage, uh, this stuff is not on the Internet, guys. This is um, this is stuff that we get. This is uh, this is when I when I decide to go where I'm going to go buy, where I'm going to look. This is uh, I turn to uh, companies like RealPage. Uh, we use them a lot. Uh, there's several others as well. But there's there's 460,000 units. If you take a look at uh, where it kind of peaked there, the uh, talking about the the black line um, that were added in 2023. Okay, so that's what started the softness. Now. As I keep telling you guys, this is a supply problem. The demand is going to continue, guys. People are going to continue to have babies. There's going to be more people born. Even though it's lower than it's been, people are going to continue to be born. The other thing is, I'm going to skip over this one really quick. We've got immigration. But the next thing I'm going to jump straight to is we got people that can't afford houses. Okay. So you have all of these things. You've got people being born. You've got immigration, which has always been a factor for population growth, even though it's probably a little bit more now. And third, you, of course, have the fact that people are supposed to be able to buy houses. So those are the three things that are driving um, the, the demand. Okay, now this is obviously a supply chart. So what, we, what we're going to see here, guys, I, I, we've talked about this. I've done videos on this. Renters are going to get some relief. Unfortunately, it's going to be about 24 months of relief. After that, it drops off, right? Yeah, because essentially, you know, the reason so much was built is because of the low interest rates. Exactly. So everyone took advantage of this and... Uh, but any construction you see right now is finishing. It's not starting. Correct. Nobody's starting new construction. So this is very similar what that what happened into 2008 is nobody really built from what 2008 until Yeah. You're right. Go back there, Jerry, if you would. So let's take a look at that chart again. Um so let's talk about 2008. Take a look at the supply. So what you have there, guys, is, you know, you really started to see supply take off in 2013, 2014, 2015. So as you guys know, we were buying like crazy in 28, uh, 2008, 2009, 2010. That's going to show supply. And what was going on during that period of time? There were, um, you know, the banks were taking back real estate. That, and it was really hard to get a loan correct, as well to build. Correct, and right. you can even see in 2011, it looks like the supply hit correct, a low point. Right, it hit the low point in 2011, right. So that would have been when things bottom out. Because when, when the door gets shut, so, you know, call it 2007, 2008, there's a lag effect. So the lag effect means that anything that got, um, anything that was already financed, so right now we're building, as you guys all know, we're, we're building uh, 600, let's call it almost 700 units. We started those in 2021. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, well, there, think about what was different in 2021. <laughs> like right. occupancy was higher, interest rates were lower, and we also knew what a price of a washer and dryer was, you know. And, you know, like everything's like a jump ball now. Like costs are more, you know, appliances. I'm talking about it was microwaves and paint and flooring and, you know, just all the general, even labor has gone up since that period of time. Rents have gone up too. 
Now go back to that real quick again, Jerry. Um, so I want to show you the next slide. Uh, so this is supply. Now I want to show you what 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 it's done to apartment rent growth, and this is why everybody's uh, feeling it right now. Uh, click the next one. Okay, there's the result. Now, hopefully, you guys can see the lag effect. When when there's low supply, rents go up. Now, look at those crazy numbers in 2021, 2022. That's just not a healthy market. What a healthy market is, is everything to the left of that. April, call it April 18 to April 20. Those two years. What's healthy is zero to 3% rent growth. That's healthy. And then we had the lockdown and everybody's like, oh my gosh, nobody's going to pay. And, um, you know, everything kind of went nuts. And then it just spiked, right? Yeah, it just went crazy. Okay, that's not healthy. It's not healthy to be able to raise rates eight to 10 to 12 percent period it's just not so the thing that will combat that is going to be supply so the demand is there again guys you've got people being born aging out kind of getting out of college what do you want to call it immigration and then of course uh, we usually the apartment business usually loses people to homes that is a healthy market the w people are supposed to move into a rental build their credit, and then buy a home. That's what it's supposed to be like. Right. So right now, you know, in this video, we're kind of going over why, you know, supply is going up and what it's causing, you know, um, landlords to do. And this is kind of what you always said through the 2020, 2021. Like, it's easy to be good at real estate when it keeps going yeah. up. But now, you know, we have where if you have tenants right now, you need to not be raising their rent and trying to maintain them. And if you're, you know, losing tenants, you may have to lower your rent in order to secure new tenants or give concessions, which is, you know, a free month or two of rent in order to get them in the door. Yep. Go, go back to that rent growth uh, chart, Jerry, if you would. So, okay. So let's talk about this. You could fog a mirror in April of 2021, put a business plan out to a bunch of people and go look how smart I am. <laughs> like, okay, it's, it's just the market just needed more units. That's all that happened. The interesting thing is during this time, interest rates went up. So what happened during this period of time? Inflation went up, interest rates went up, which means that construction went down because as interest rates go up, new builds go down. But People were going, oh, my gosh, things are great. Uh, you know, the, the multifamily market, it's the best. <laughs> and uh, now, let's, Jerry, go back to that, please. Keep um, having him go back to the That's all right. Chart. Just leave it up until I tell you to take it down. It'll be great. And then um, then uh, now, okay, so now let's take a look at, call it July or October 2023. And that wasn't very long ago, guys. This is five, six months ago. Flat or negative. So what happens here? It's important. There's a couple things that this all shows up in the property management world all the time. So I've been monitoring this for a while. As you guys know, we have 10,000 tenants. And, you know, so, you know, if uh, a, a fair amount of those people are turning over every month, new people moving in, new people moving out. So we're, we've been seeing this since, uh, you know, summer of last year. Now, each one of these markets can be a little different based on the supply of that particular market. So there are some markets that have a lot of construction. There are some markets that don't have much at all. So what you've got here is you've got rents going down. And so now the landlords finally are scrambling. <laughs> they, they have to be competitive because uh, they're going, what, what just happened? You know, we were getting 8, 10, 12% rent growth. Let me tell you something, folks. You, that was a big gift. You're not getting that back again. I hope you don't ever get it back because this is, renters are not supposed to be in this scenario, right? Well, and also, you know, for those that hopefully you didn't base your rents I on year over did. year, 10% rent, rent growth. You I know? guarantee they did. Yeah. This is so exciting for me uh, because guys, like, so this is the time when you have your experience and profession you can go in and pick up the pieces. What that means is, you go in and you 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 um, you solve people's problems. That's the way I like to say it. So, um, Jerry, go back to that chart again. So let's take a look at where we are now. All right. So we're flat. So the one thing to watch here, there's two there's two things. The first thing is 
Imagine you own an apartment and you you know your your let's say your rents are two grand for a two bedroom. You're uh, to Daniel's point earlier. All you're trying to do is make that person renew, right? So if you're a renter, uh, you're at a you're at a huge advantage now to the landlord. You, you know because you're going to go in and you now are probably if you just look, you're going to see that there's concessions in the market. You know there, you know we're looking at markets where there's one month, even two months, even more uh, free rent. If you if you if you if you build a project and you are just opening. Let's say it's 300 units. Think you have 300 vacants. <laughs> that's what you have. You have 300 vacants you got to fill. Okay, that's 300 customers. That's that's 300 people. And when you have that kind of supply without demand, then all of a sudden you're going to start offering concessions. So we, we have something that we call a trade out rent. What's it? So what's a trade out rent? So let's say you're at that two thousand dollar. The market might be two thousand plus six weeks free. So that's what's most important to understand. So that's that's a that's like a three thousand dollar concession on a twenty four thousand dollar number. So two thousand times twelve is twenty four if it's a one year lease, and six weeks free is basically three thousand against twenty four. So you're you're talking about in that particular case, you know, twelve to fifteen percent discount. So that's that's called a trade out rent, and that's on somebody who lives there. So. Uh, in addition to that, tr to try to attract new customers, there's all kinds of deals flying around. So, so this is a good time to be a renter. This is a good time to negotiate your rent. This is a good time to experience some softness. And this, uh, what I really, really want to emphasize here is, guys, is this is a supply issue. So, Jerry, go back to the supply chart, if you would. People are making fun That's of right. you on YouTube. I, of course they are. <laughs> I love it. Well, I know. Um, so I, I just keep wanting to talk about this because they're going to add, this is what they're going to add next year. If they're going to add another 232,000 units. So this, obviously we're in March now. Um, we're going to add almost 700,000 units. Last year we added uh, 460, I think it was. Okay. So you already have softness from 2023. You're going to have more softness in 2024. Then in 2025, this is what I really wanted to point out. Maybe you're lucky on getting 400,000 units. Maybe. Now, here's why I say maybe. The people that are sitting there in 2025 have choices. They have a choice whether to break ground or not. They have a choice to get construction financing or not. They have a choice to, to put that deal on the, on the shelf. So the 2025 20, number is not necessarily locked and loaded. And, um, and I think that uh, what you're going to see is a big supply correction here um, after this year. And so, so this is why I keep telling people, if you're going to buy real estate, this is the time. You want to buy it when it's being disrupted. And what's being disrupted? Trade out rents are being disrupted. Lost to lease, which is the difference between market rent and actual rent, is being disrupted. Concessions being disrupted. And everybody's fighting for the tenant and fighting for occupancy. So this is not happening in every market. There are certain markets that are doing very well, and there are certain markets that are not. So this is not a national statistic, and I think that's important. You know, you might have a really, really good market in, let's say, Cincinnati or Columbus, Ohio, and it might not be that way, let's say, in Houston. So, so you just got to gotta take a look at e each individual market. All right, so what is everybody saying? What are they making fun of me on? They're just making fun of you. Back My to the chart, chart back Jerry. To the chart, back Jerry. to the chart, Jerry. Oh. So, <laughs> yes, hey, Jerry. Yes, exactly. So, so there's other reasons, though, than just these big um, builders, developers, um, bringing more units to the market. Yes. We also need to talk about the accidental landlord. Jerry, if you could play that video. Yep, good idea. Dana, let's talk about accidental landlords. So the first thing I want to bring up is that we've seen a rise in accidental landlords more recently. And part of that has to do with the calculation of saying, I've been locked into these interest rates, 3%, and whoever buys this property is not going to have those interest, those interest rates. The market has obviously been softening. 
And so you put that calculation in place and say, I have some sort of advantage to rent this because I'm locked into an interest rate that someone else couldn't get for this property. And so we've seen folks upgrade where they're living or they're just moving for job reasons, something else, personal reasons, and they hold on to the property they have. That is what we consider an accidental landlord. So accidental landlords are a thing right now. They never planned on being landlords. That's it's kind of like with, with me, really, when I met you. I was not planning on being a landlord. But you own a property, you live in it, and then you realize you're in such a low interest rate that it doesn't make sense to sell it. So what, what really, is, by the way, thankfully, I don't have a chart. But what, what's really great here is that the this is why the listings are low, guys. Mm -hmm. This is the reason. If you're sitting on two and a half to three, I just had this conversation this morning. I said, what's your interest rate today? And I think um, uh, I was talking to a, a couple friends of ours and uh, they said they're in the mid threes. And I said, okay, so that's an asset now. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that interest rate is an asset. Well, you even told me on one of my condos that I have, you know, um, my tenants are moving out and it needs some work. And you said, well, maybe you should just sell it. And then uh, I told you, I go, I have a 2.6 interest rate on it. And, and you're I like, said, oh, never mind. Yeah, you can't yeah. sell it. <laughs> no, it's, we had that conversation mm -hmm. last week. And, and here's the thing, like Danielle's rent, or I'm sorry, her mortgage on that thing is like, it's like seven or $800. No, it's like $550. Okay. And that is with right. the tax and insurance. Yeah. Uh, this is like a two bedroom <laughs> Yeah. Place. Kind okay. Of, yeah. All right. And rents are call, they'll call it two grand. So she's mm -hmm. way in the money. But the the point is, if she sold that today, um, it would sell for more. Of course, she would. Mm -hmm. So she would get that. She get the capital gain. But then she, if she tried to rebuy it, let's say, she'd pay fifty grand more, and her uh, her mortgage payment would be more than double. Yeah. Maybe more than that's double. the reality of it and so she's like well I'll just keep it and throw a renter in there and, and I think that thing cash flows you know quite a bit so that's the scenario well, when people are in this scenario right they because you know the normal trajectory of things is people buy something they have a kid or two they realize they need a bigger house or they get relocated and they sell and they roll that money into their new home well like I said right now it just doesn't make sense because people are saying well I can make money on this property and it'll help me with this high interest rate that I'm getting into. It'll help me on my next payment, um, you know, for that. And my brother's doing the same thing. Like they, he always swore off being a landlord, but now he's looking at his house and he's looking at his mortgage payment and the rent. And he's like, I think I actually might do that. Yeah. Before you kind of needed that equity, right? Mm -hmm. Like you needed the equity to buy something else, you know, contingent, contingent on, I'm going to make an offer on something contingent on something selling. But now, as I said, the interest rate is now an asset mm -hmm. you, because you can't trade that out. And the, the, the payment is so much higher, especially if you think about it. Most people, not everyone, most people upgrade whatever it is they're in. So they, they're sitting in a three or $400,000 house. They want to go to four or 500, let's say, or whatever. And so, you know, now you have that plus you have the higher interest cost. So they're just sticking. That's why uh, uh, one of the things we, 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 we talked about in the last um, video we did the last live was uh, one of the one of the things to watch is the Home Depot, the low stocks, you know, those kinds of things. You're going to start to see a surge of people staying put, replacing flooring, replacing appliances, replacing blinds, you, you know, painting. The, they're going to re, there's going to be the remodel business is just going to go crazy as a result of those people, because normally people, ah, house is getting tired. Eight, they've been in eight or ten years or whatever. They're going to move and let the next person do it. Um, and uh, that certainly still drives those things. But this is a little bit different. And I think the big issue, and this is part of the reason why I don't think house prices are going down anytime soon. You know what? What the market right now? Last I looked, it was like two and a half months of inventory. I think it was. A healthy market is somewhere between five and six. So it's 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 right around half, even less than half I've seen um, in in some uh, charts. And luckily, I don't have another chart, Jerry. But, <laughs> um, but you know, uh, so you got 50 percent less in inventory of single family housing. So this is a problem for um, uh, people that want to buy a home. Yeah. So you have housing prices going up. You have doesn't look like interest rates are coming down anytime soon. 
uh, like everyone thought. Remember four, six? You know, four, oh, four, yeah, six you got nine. yelled at for that. Oh, they're going to be down by the end of 2023, and now we're in 2024. They're meeting in March. Probably yeah. still not going to go down. So yeah, The truth is we all don't know, but at the end of the day, um, the, the Fed's been pretty transparent on their moves, uh, yeah. in my opinion. If you really read the, what, what they're saying, they're, the, the, you know, they haven't been deceptive at all. So yeah, I just don't, even if rates go down a little bit, you know, I think the last I looked, sick, over 60% of the country is sitting under 4% interest rates or something like that. Or not the country, the, the, the right. people who bought. Right. And so the point is, though, is that they're going to, a lot of them are going to turn them into rental units, which is just more rental units added to the market. Right. And Nemo does say on YouTube, he said, accidental landlords get eaten alive. Property is not set up to be a rental and the homeowner lives off the rent with no reserve. So that we could do a whole video yeah. on that and we probably will. That's a good one, Things Nemo. kind yeah, of roll around. Yeah, I but, love it. Um, but that is true. But at the same time, they are doing that right now. And we are seeing that, you know, in the market. Yeah, I know it's you got to think people are getting squeezed, man. Inflation's killing everything. It's, it's horrible to see. And I think if, if somebody can make, couple grand a month in cash flow then you know uh, it's a decision people are making uh, that's a fact well and we have to talk about the third reason that we have such a big supply and um it's airbnb right um jerry can you pull that video airbnb is currently getting uh crushed right now yes they are and uh, i have a tenant he's not doing well and i think that lease is going to come up pretty soon he airbnb is my place because uh well, so let's let's first talk about the deal you cut which was a great deal this is a while ago the deal bought a place and uh Airbnb, great location uh was it furnished at the time no no um and then this person came to her and said i'll lease it for 12 months and gave her a really good number way above market um, because they're going to arbitrage it. So mm -hmm. so she cut this deal 12 months. And he wanted to move in the day after I closed. Zero vacancy. <laughs> so, so no she, vacancy. Yeah, so she got rent the day after she closed. I'm like, that's a good deal. Yeah. So, you know, above market, zero vacancy, fixed mount. She knows what she's going to cash flow each and every month. He didn't want any repairs done because yeah. he wanted to move in so, right away. So she, she's she been watching this thing like a hawk. and Because um, I thought about doing an Airbnb on the property. Well, I'm glad you didn't because uh, it would have been a horrible dinner no, for me, guys. Can you imagine this? I'm sitting there <laughs> he, listening. He's not... Uh, he's <laughs> Most months he has not cash flowed the property. Yeah. So, in fact, ever probably. No, he has a, a okay. few of the okay, months. But. So, anyway, super negative. And now... This is kind of the next point is um, he's he's looking at renting it yeah. for the amount he's paying her. Yeah, he's looking at renting it for the amount he's paying me. He's trying to cover his bases. Um, he has no renters at all for the whole entire year after mid-April. And um, so if he cannot rent it, the next thing that will conversation that will, he does not know. I know this, by the way. But the next conversation he does that, now, though, the next conversation that will be had with me is that he needs out of his lease. So I am prepared for that mentally. And um, thank God. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but I this is happening all over. So, Jerry, can you play yeah. that video? So according to Air DNA, they track everything Airbnb. OK, in December of 2023, there were 22,000 available Airbnb listings in Miami-Dade County, which is a 19% increase from 2019, and Broward County saw a massive 71% increase from 2019 with about almost 18,000 available listings. Earlier this month in February, both the Florida Senate and the Florida House introduced two different bills to start helping local governments regulate short-term rentals. In fact, uh, Senate Bill 280 is going to allow local governments to create vacation rental registration programs, and it's also going to cap maximum overnight occupancy and would establish a uniform set of regulations throughout the state. And so the reason why this is important is because this is going to give more power to local governments to decide what they want done with short-term rentals.
did a study and they saw that a 1% increase in Airbnb listings in a local housing market created a 0.01% increase in residential rents. Mm. So the more Airbnbs there are, the more rent increases because obviously that takes away from supply. So as these start to come, you know, this is kind of the trajectory is trying to rent them as long term and then perhaps sell them if they can't rent them as long term. And you remember the secret. And as that happens, you're going to have a cut in rent. And we've always told you guys, we've been telling you this for years, is you would only buy an Airbnb if it cash flowed as a long-term rental. Plan and C, not plan B. It's plan C, yeah, that's Airbnb. Yeah, plan C is Airbnb. It's a great option if you can cash flow it as a long-term rental to then rent it as a short-term. But... You know, the problem even with a lot of these, and we know people that have done this, including my tenant, is you're trying to then rent it long term for more than market rents. And market rents are going down. And just and and it's very hard to find a long term tenant that wants a furnished place. You know what I mean? Because they have their own furniture most of the time, unless you're catching somebody luckily here on business for a year. So for the most part, you know, these Airbnbs are going to be in trouble and they're going to add more supply to the housing market, maybe, but definitely to the rental market. Yeah, they're going to change their name to just air. <laughs> <laughs> no longer is it Airbnb. So here's the thing. This is good news because if you guys are seeing there was some dry powder, which you should be, you're going to start to see these things hit the market because people are going to walk away from equity. Most of these are financed, not all of them. But I would say most of them are financed. The other thing to really, really understand about Airbnb, if you look at Airbnb, and this is what the people that own Airbnbs are going to tell you. Oh, the Airbnb market is growing. And guess what? It's true. If you look at year over year, Airbnb demand, it's growing. So go, just like back in the charts, which I promise I won't pull up again, you've got supply and demand. So what's happened is Airbnb supply has grown like crazy because everyone jumped in it with these low interest rates just like they did. And that stuff should make its way back into the listing side. And you guys are already starting to see listings are starting to creep up in many, many markets. Not every market, but in many, many markets. And this is also healthy for the person that's trying to get into that home, even though Typically, these are renovated Airbnbs, but uh, as we, we like to, we always look at these things because you can always tell there's an Airbnb as to why. There's bunk beds. Bunk beds. There's always bunk, bunk beds, beds yeah. in the picture, bunk <laughs> yeah. beds in you the listing. You guys see bunk beds in the listing, you know, <laughs> or, or two doubles, yeah. uh, you know, in a, in a room, you know, whenever mm -hmm. you see multiple beds in a room, typically um, you, 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 it's going to be some kind of an Airbnb because they like to say, oh, it sleeps eight, you know. Right. Oh, yeah. My guy like said a, it sleeps like 12. Yeah, it's like it's a two-bedroom. Like, it's a studio. <laughs> it's a studio, but it sleeps 12. So anyway, um, th those are that's another piece. And so uh, what the, the big wild card is going to be interest rates mm -hmm. still. Right. Yeah. Like, well, you know, obviously, I mean, guys, if, if the Fed lowers rates, they're going to go a quarter point. <laughs> And that's just probably to appease all of you so you could just stop talking about it. And then, uh, you know, and then, but then we got the elections coming up in what, six months or something, mm -hmm. seven months? So, oh, that's going to be a doozy. So, you, you know, you, you, you're going to get quarter point, maybe uh, reductions, but that's what half a point, three quarters of a point, maybe a point if you're lucky. That's not going to move the needle very much. So, I, I just think that um, this this new this new supply is good in some uh, obviously apartments are going to get flooded. You're going to see single family. We've got a window here, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to be about 24 months, maybe 36, depending on how it spills out. You're going to start to see some defaults. You're going to start to see all that kind of stuff. There's a fair amount of professional investors um, hoarding cash right now, just waiting to snap some of these things up. Absolutely. And I wanted to mention that we have Limitless coming up in August yeah, to make sure go, to get your go. tickets. Let's go. It is going to be August 29th through the 31st in Dallas. Yep. Hey, guys, this is going to be fun. If you've been there before, thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. I'm telling you, we had 45 speakers last year. This this year's, oh, I'm having so much fun getting these speakers together right now. It's going to be a heck. We're going to announce them soon. And uh, it's going to be in Dallas. Obviously, we'll be there. Or my whole team will be there. And um, you're going to learn a lot because uh, 
oh, things are just going to be unwinding at the right time for this conference. It's going to be super exciting. Absolutely. And use code KEN10 to get uh, 10% off. So let's hop into our Ken Pro. This is where you can ask Ken a question. We have a couple good questions today, and we might pull some from YouTube. So make sure if you're listening on YouTube, you ask. Um, Darla is asking, do you think we'll be seeing many foreclosures or bankruptcies or tax liens? And if so, how do we find them? Yes, yes, and yes. You do? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, we're starting to see it, you know, for sure. Like, of course, with all this stuff happening, you, you, you know, you're going to see it. So now each one's going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm We're seeing it already in the commercial p space, right? So you're seeing it in an office and, and multifamily. Uh, just go, the banks have an REO department, real estate owned department. Go there. There's also, um, what was the name of that website, Jerry? I was on Black uh, Market. No, no. Black. Gosh. Black Knight, Black Knight, sorry. Black Knight uh, has a really, really good site. Uh, I would go there. The Mortgage Bankers Association, I would go there. You know, tax liens are a little different because that's when people uh, can't can't pay property tax. I think all of that's a jump ball. You gotta you gotta take a look at. Let's take a look at. We we did that video uh, last week. It's pretty eye opening. People are getting squeezed. And you're going to start to see, I think, you know, the the people are starting to finance debt. That's not good. It was typically done through credit cards, but now it's spilling over to all these other things like Apple Pay, comma, later. You know, these are big, big things. You're, we're starting to see things like Flex on site. So imagine this before, let's say, Daniel was one of my renters. She would pay me. Now she pays Flex. I get the money from Flex immediately, and then Flex now has to deal with her uh, if she can't be uh, if she can't pay. So, so yes, I do think we're we're starting to see people finance debt. Now, there's also a lot of people that have saved a lot of money, and they have a lot of equity in their home. And um, you know, there's a lot of people that own their home free and clear too, and they have really low mortgages. So, that's going to soften it a little bit. But yes, I definitely see all of those things. I mean. If we just talked about Airbnbs, I mean, if I had four Airbnbs and uh, I owe, I would probably, you know, dump them. So our next question comes from YouTube. It comes from Zeus. It's a really good question. It says, do you think we should keep renting this year and look to buy next year or buy now? Um, well, I think it's a, uh, I, I would wait uh, you know, I'm waiting and we are looking, let's put it that way. I, it's, this is a fabulous time to be looking for distress. So the rates are still quite high. So if you can buy today and afford it and it cash flows, then do it. But, um, you, there are sellers that are being realistic and exiting. So uh, as I told you guys, we, we, we bid on a deal two weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, for the cost of the debt. Literally, and the the seller um, was gonna. Uh, there was gosh, there was quite a people bidding on this project, and um, the seller ended up um, getting it in escrow. We actually didn't. Um, we weren't successful on bidding it because we bid a little too low. But somebody bid just above it, like a couple million higher, and uh, that went into escrow that way. And of course, the brokers are doing a good job trying to get as much as they can. But at the end of the day, um, it's. Um, um, that's the reality. People are people are gonna say that's what's gonna happen on these Airbnbs. At some point, they're gonna have to be realistic. On we're not gonna be able to get our equity back, but now I'm now I just don't want to have the negative um, credit rating because of I can't pay the mortgage and I can't pay the loan. So, so you're gonna start to see that that that'll start creeping up this year. Yep, absolutely. Um, that's why I would I would rent hard cash and just focus on a little market like Daniel's. Do you know Danielle's buy box is pretty clear. She a knows few streets. she knows exactly a few streets what she wants. She knows what the rents are. She knows what the housing prices are. So the only really factor is going to be uh, the interest rate and what goes on with the with the pricing. So then make sure you're not all over the place because that get that makes the world really confusing. And uh, you know there are markets all over that are cash flowing. I have friends buying right now, so you could buy, but 
I, I think the, this is the unraveling. Yeah, I would just hold on and just be super picky. Don't feel like, oh, let's just do this now. This isn't exactly what I want. Just wait. Um, so the next question from Ken Pro comes from Nick. He said, I, I watched your Instagram reel about New York Lenny <laughs> and the importance of mentors. How did you meet Lenny and where do you think are good places to meet similar mentors? So maybe explain to everyone oh, who sure, Lenny is. Sure, sure. Um, so there was a, a gentleman by the name of Leonard Litwin and uh, his nickname was New York Lenny. And um, he gave me my first opportunity to buy my, fig, uh, my first apartment project. And um, what he had done was I was in the management business. So as you guys know, I started in property management. So I was managing properties and I was doing a good job and people knew who I was and we had a good brand. And so when people would come build something, they would call us and say, would you manage our property? Because that's a key piece. And um, so he did that. They ended up building a project in Arizona. And um, uh, once I filled it up and we leased it up, um, uh, he, I had a great relationship at that point. And he, uh, over the phone, said, you know, would you like to buy this? And I'm like, please. And I did. I still own it, actually, today. That's how I met him. I met him because I was already in the game in the property management world. I will tell you, I was scared to death. <laughs> I did not know how to buy it. I did not, I had never bought anything of that size. I had done small stuff, you know, little uh, two bedroom, three bedroom places, but never anything that big. I still own the property. I can't give that one up. Um, and um, so that's, uh, that's the story. Awesome. Well, we have another question here. I think is a good one from Hot Dog. It said, I bought it in a market that doesn't cash flow well. I have a 3% rate, but it's not cash flowing. Should I sell? Ooh, that's a tough one. So you have a 3% rate. Hopefully it's fixed. I'm sure it is um, because it's uh, you put down that it's three. I'm not sure why it doesn't cash flow well. So I would look at that. So there, there's obviously three main things that come to mind. The first one is, um, is there a demand there from a renter standpoint? The demand, right? you know, typically, um, and obviously, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but that's something that you really want to make sure you want to, uh, you can't just buy a place and hope that it, it's rented. When there's high demand, then you actually have higher occupancy. So now uh, there's that. Then there's all these other things on the income side, like what is the rent right now? So uh, we were just talking, Daniil owns some stuff in North Scottsdale, and um, even that stuff is starting to get soft a little bit, right? So what, what, what the rent was a year ago has actually come back a little bit. So markets can go up and down, but not all markets. Some markets are still going like this. Like there's, area, there's people still moving to areas like in Florida, like in the Miami area, for example, and some areas of Dallas um, where rents are still really, really strong. And then the other side of that is uh, the expenses. Now, it could be that... You didn't underwrite it correctly. It could be that you underwrite it perfectly. But typically I find that a lot of times people don't think about vacancy as an expense. You know, the utilities, the property taxes, the insurance, and then even CapEx or, cap, you know, like a roof or a parking lot or, um, you know, or just a resurface or, you know, or, or maybe some renovations like, like Daniil's. Um, you know, has a tenant moving out and, she, you know, she's looking at a four or $5,000 uh, remodel inside in order to re-rent it so that could be a reason too so all of those factors i i, I can't i wish i could, i would give you if i knew what market it was and all that kind of stuff i'd probably give you a more direct answer but those are all the things things you need to look at if there's strong rental demand in the area um <clears throat> you're probably going to be fine it might be a management problem it might uh if there's if it's going to be weak which it could be based on everything we've been talking about uh you 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 might want to exit you you know, it's just, it's situational. Yep. And there may be somebody, you know, Pace Morby teaches assuming your loan. There may be somebody that you would get a higher price oh, if they assume the loan. Yeah, so. Subject to, yeah, subject yeah I to. would look up that stuff. That's an interesting one. That's a good idea because, you, you know, somebody can come in and, and um, assume that 3%. Yep. Um, you know, that, that, that loan is an asset to you. So that's, that's why I would hesitate. 
Yep. Um, we're having so many good questions on YouTube today. So a desire for you says, Ken, I'm 30 days into my 45 day 1031 exchange. Ooh. I can't find a property that cash flows enough. Should I pay the 55,000 tax or just buy something that cash flows a little bit? Ooh, this is oh, you this always is a tough say one. not to do a 1031 I unless do, you know I what do, you're going to roll I do. it into. I love this question yeah. because I struggle with this one. Number one, guys. So <laughs> uh, hindsight's 2020, but I will tell you something that I learned long ago. You know, a lot of times that when you're buying a property, uh, first of all, for those of you who might not know, a 1031 exchange is um, an IRS. I think it's an actual IRS code, 1031. Um, is you can defer tax, roll it into the next thing, as long as it's more or uh, uh, at or more what you just paid. So, so in other words, if you sell something for a million bucks, you have to buy something for a million or more. Um, otherwise, you have tax. You can roll all that gain into the next property. So that's what a 1031 is. Now, there's it's a great strategy to defer tax. The number one thing I learned was you as a seller, think about this one. Just wrap your head around this. As a seller, you want to extend escrow. <laughs> think about that. Most sellers don't want to extend escrow. They're, they're, they're making sure the buyer can buy. Okay, as a seller, if you're doing a 1031, you want to extend escrow. Um, also, as a seller, before you get into escrow and you have this clock ticking, you want to make sure that you have three great properties identified. And that, that's before you actually get into contract because once you close... You, you know that clock is ticking. So and so now you're in a situation where you're chasing tax. Um, so I've seen people. I've seen it, it's. I need more information to actually make the decision. But it seems to me like um, if you've got fifty, if you're going to sp uh, spend fifty-five grand in tax uh, versus make a little bit of cash flow. Um, you know, you, you, you know, obviously the other side of that is the money that you don't pay in tax, right? You're going to have a, a lot more of that equity, which has got to be, you know, in the hundred to $200,000, you, you know, I would not want to force that into something on a low cash flow. Personally, I would probably just pay the tax and, um, you know, lesson learned and so 50, it's, you know, it's tax. So it's not, it's not a mistake. It's just um, a, a little bit of a lesson. So, but now you've got a couple hundred grand, let's say, to, to go out with, we'll call it dry powder, and look for something instead of, you know, 250000 So, you know, and which would be forced into something anyway. So um, I probably would pay the tax and I would probably would just, um, you know, take it on the chin. Uh, <clears throat> there, are, um, there are ways, however, to offset that tax. Don't forget. Things like cost segregations and bonus depreciation and things like that. So, not all is lost. The you know that is a capital gain, for sure. Um, and one thing is, um, if if you closed last year, <clears throat> you 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 might not have time. But if you closed, let's say January this year, you got a full year to figure out that 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 tax piece because there's a lot of ways to save that. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for checking this out. We just did a video on exactly how you can buy your first rental and set yourself up for those opportunities. So check that out and we'll see you next week.